Well, at this point, you've been working on getting into medical school for years. You've prepared yourself. You've been thinking of diversity, and you've been being, being creative in both your activities and the way that you describe them and in your personal statement. You've been working with a physician. You have great letters of reference. And at this point, you likely will have a committee of medical school that is interested in talking to you. This is the interview. So the interview is really where you nail that last aspect of getting into medical school. And it's important to understand the dynamics of uh, the interview. So I want to spend some time taking you through that. The committee has read about you from the perspective of others in terms of the letters of reference and from the perspective of you in terms of your personal statement. They think they know you and they like what they see. That's why they're interviewing you and that's why they're bringing you in. They don't interview if they have big questions about you at this point, and that includes your grades. You don't have to go into an interview and convince them that I can do this. So don't focus on that. Go in and convince them that you are a strong and individual person. Now, in the interview, you can set this up very, very easily. I tell students that the first thing they should think about with an interview is to take charge of the interview. Now, that's an important thing to think about. Most students go into interviews because, let's face it, most students don't have much experience with interviews. They go into the interview seeing the person interviewing them or the people interviewing them is up here and themselves is down here. And that is the wrong way to approach an interview. Yes, there is a difference between the perspectives that you have and the experiences that they have. But if you act like you see yourself in that way, what you're doing is you're showing I don't have that core that I described as being essential for leadership. Well, how do you establish this in the first place? Well, you establish it from the second that you meet the first person interviewing you. When you see them, you don't wait for them to come to you. You stand up and you go to them. You don't wait for them to stick out their hand to shake your hand. You stick out your hand and shake it first. You take the action necessary first, and those actions say, this is the person that I am. I'm a confident person, and I'm not afraid of you. You might be terrified, but what matters here is perception, not what the way you actually feel. You shake the hand. You give them the firm handshake. You're not trying to bust their knuckles, but you're giving them the firm handshake to let them know, I'm an equal to you. Because the more you act like an equal to the people interviewing you, the more they will see you that way. And remember, they're looking for strength. They're looking for strong core, strong character. This is the first thing that you want to communicate to them. The second thing you want to think about is something that students forget. When they get in an interview, let's face it, the first time you interview, you're going to be nervous. And what happens when people get nervous? They get the deer in the headlights look. You're communicating with your face. I'm nervous. I'm scared of this. Well, Everybody knows that you're nervous associated with that, and it's actually okay to be nervous with that. It's not okay to show that. Those doctors that are interviewing you have been through this process before, and they've had enough experience that they know that, yes, the interview may be intimidating, but there's much bigger things along the way. So the more you communicate that this is, wow, a really big thing, and they know that, wow, there's really bigger things down the line, the less interested in you they're going to be. So the way that you get over that is a very simple thing. You smile. You smile your face off. And when you smile your face off, what you're communicating is, I'm comfortable inside. Because that's what a smile says. The second thing about the interview is when you talk and you answer the questions, A, honesty is absolutely essential. B, you need to come across as a communicator. Now, how do you come across as a communicator? Well, remember that you have to be able to show that those people on the, on the committee that I have what it takes. I'm like you. And you are somebody who's going to have to talk to people. How do you communicate? Well, of course, you will think about your answers and you'll work very hard on, on things like defining yourself and why you want to go into medical school. Those are things are, that you'll think about. But if you sit there like this and you talk the whole time, what does that say about your ability to communicate? As compared to if you're out here and you're open, notice my hands. Hands do a lot with communication. One of the things I tell students in an interview, never let the hands touch each other. Because if they touch each other, here's what happens. They clutch each other. Not a good message and not a good visual message. If the hands don't touch each other, they have to work. 
And believe me, this looks like much more communicative style than this does. Very important to remember. There are questions that you think about in an interview that are important. They're always going to get asked a question such as, why do you want to be a doctor? Everybody's answer for that should be unique. Remember that. I can't tell you one answer that's going to work because there's not one answer that's going to work. But I tell students to think about the messages that they communicate. And here's one I give to students. They trip up on all the time. And I'm going to pass it on to you so that you have a chance to think about this. It's a very innocent question, but I think it reveals to a committee a lot about how old a student thinks they are. Now, before I give you the question, I want to say why that's important. You are applying to a profession where you're going to be dealing with life and death matters. You're going to be young compared to the people interviewing you. Now, they are worried about your maturity and your ability as one of the reasons they're interviewing you. They want to know that you have what it takes and the maturity necessary to be successful. Let's imagine they ask you the following question. Tell me about your family. Very common question. And it's one when I give it to my students, they almost invariably trip up on it because they start telling me about their family. And the family they tell me about are their brothers and sisters and mommies and daddies and grandmas and grandpas. And what they've done in that process is they've defined themselves as a child. A family is something you make. Remember that. You don't have a family at this point. You're part of your parents' family. And if you define yourself in that way, they will see you as a child. Don't make that mistake. Start thinking about yourself and what it means to be an adult and what it means that when you define yourself in a younger way, how that's going to look to a committee. That means the last part of what I will advise you here is to think about what it means to be an adult and how your adult experiences have defined you. I start at the beginning by saying, who are you? And I start at the beginning by saying, what makes you unique? What's really going to make you unique are your adult experiences and your adult perspectives. That I will conclude this with. I hope that's very helpful to you.